Hello, you sexy biscuits, and welcome back into Morrowind on Android. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who viewed my last video. It absolutely bloody exploded, so thank you. I've had so many comments that it's honestly been quite hard to keep up. These comments have been asking multiple things, and I'm hoping in today's video we can go through at least a couple of them, and I can help you get this set up. Okay, so now we're on our phone's home screen, we're going to head over to Open Microwave. Now in the last video I made, I skipped over quite a few of these options. So in today's video, I'm going to go over your most requested questions. So first things first, if any of you are worried about not having enough space to be able to have Morrowind on your phone, then you can put Morrowind on your SD card. All you need on your phone is the Open Microwave app, so that means it's going to save space on your phone's memory. It also means that your mods will also be on the SD card. And talking about mods, let's go a little bit more in depth. So heading over to Morrowind's Nexus Mods page, I want to go over a couple of things because not every mod is going to work with Open Microwave. Stuff that changes the core graphics and sounds may have some issues. If there is a mod that you absolutely adore, make sure to literally just type in the name of that mod and then type in OpenMW afterwards, and there are a lot of forum posts talking about if those mods are compatible or not. Personally, I love Morrowind Comes Alive, and this works perfectly with OpenMW. This mod allows you to add over 1200 types of NPCs across the entire game. It just makes everything feel a lot more alive. And this works fantastically with Morrowind Rebirth. Now yes, this does impact performance quite heavily, but it's well worth it. I will be leaving a link to both of these mods in the description below. So you've downloaded Morrowind Comes Alive, let's say, and you're wondering where the hell do I put these files inside the zip folder? All you have to do is head over to your Morrowind folder inside your phone, and in that folder you will see another folder called Data Files. We're going to open this up, all you're going to do is drag and drop every single file and folder into here. You will generally have your ESPs on the outside of the folders. Now, of course, if you have any conflicting files, make sure to see if the mod is compatible with the other mods that you have. You then want to come out of there, go to mods, and then activate the new mods you've added into the game. And that is it. You're completely done. So now that I've explained how to mod Morrowind, let's talk about how to control Morrowind. Now, as you guys can see, these are the default touchscreen controls. Now, would I recommend you Using these, well, no, but they actually do work pretty well. Surprisingly well, actually. I don't generally like touchscreen controls in a game like this, but they do their job quite well. So you have the ability to move, of course, with your left thumb, and your right thumb is going to be controlling your map. And then if you want to, let's say, click on something, you can do that. So what are your other options? Well, you have the ability to, of course, use a controller. You're also probably wondering, how do you get rid of all these buttons on the screen? So to get rid of all those buttons all over the screen, all you have to do is come down to hide on-screen buttons, and that's it, they're gone. <laughs> you don't have to worry about them ever again. There's nothing anymore. So let's try and get your controller connected. Now, you can use a DualShock 4 or an Xbox One controller. You can also use any other Bluetooth controller, but make sure that it has analog triggers and not digital triggers. For some reason, this app doesn't like it and will not recognize them. So for this demonstration, I am going to use an Xbox One S controller. This is the newer Xbox One controller that has Bluetooth capabilities because the original Xbox One controller does not. So make sure you have a newer Xbox One controller. So all you have to do is head over to your settings menu. We're going to go down to connections here and then go on Bluetooth. Now what this is going to do is start searching for a controller. And I'm going to hold down the guide button on my Xbox One controller. And of course, because I've already connected this, it will work. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to unpair these two so you guys can see this happen in real time. And in theory, if I was to hit scan again, if I was to then scroll down, there you go. Available devices, Xbox One controller. We're going to hit pair. And any second now, it should connect. And there you go. I now have the ability to click back on the B button. So it's definitely connected. 
So we're going to head over to the controller option and you guys can see that we can actually set up any single button to whatever we want. Now personally, I have it set so if I press left and right on my D-pad, they swap between my different weapons. And you can set up whatever you want. Also, make sure to enable joystick on in the bottom left hand corner there because that's very important. Now, you can use keyboard and mouse. Personally, I haven't been able to get my mouse working with this. Um, I don't know why. I'm thinking maybe it's because I don't have a Bluetooth mouse. I only have one that's connected to my adapter. So that may be my main problem. Keyboard definitely works. I've been able to walk around with WAS and D and you're able to even go in and set what those keys do. So to go over another couple of the options in here, I want to quickly talk about the graphics library because for some reason, when I first started playing this game, the water was basically milk. I don't know why, but it was just completely white. And I fixed that by going down to the graphics library and selecting Glass V2. Now this completely fixed my issues. Now, this may not work for you depending on what graphics chip your phone has. I'm not sure if that affects it, but I would recommend swapping between these and see what's the best for performance and graphics. Also, disable preloading. Even with my Galaxy Note 10 Plus, which has 12 gigabytes of RAM, I still get quite bad stutter if I have preloading on. So yeah, make sure to disable that. Well, yes, it may mean you have more loading screens, it does mean the game runs a bit better. And of course, seeing as I have the game modded, I have my game set to 1600 by 900. Now, you could probably have the game at 1080p if you aren't going to be modding it. As I said before, I want to thank everyone who commented on the last video. It really meant the world to me. I hope this video helped you. If it did, make sure to leave a like and possibly share it with your friends. But until next time, that's me, out. There you guys.